Imagine a company is hosting a website on a server in Google Cloud Data Center in Finland. It may take around 100 milliseconds to load for users in Europe, but it takes 3 to 5 seconds to load for users in Mexico. Fortunately, there are strategies to minimize this request latency for users who are far away. These strategies are called caching and content delivery networks, which are two important concepts in modern web development and system design. Caching is a technique used to improve the performance and efficiency of a system. It involves storing a copy of certain data in a temporary storage so that future requests for that data can be served faster. There are four common places where cache can be stored. The first one is browser caching, where we store website resources on a user's local computer. So when a user revisits a site, the browser can load the site from the local cache rather than fetching everything from the server again. Users can disable caching by adjusting the browser settings. In most browsers, developers can disable cache from the developer tools. For instance, in Chrome, we have the disable cache option in the developer's tools network tab. The cache is stored in a directory on the client's hard drive managed by the browser. And browser caches store HTML, CSS and JS bundle files on the user's local machine, typically in a dedicated cache directory managed by the browser. We use the cache control header to tell browser how long this content should be cached. For example here the cache control is set to 7200 seconds, which is equivalent to 2 hours. When the requested data is found in the cache, we call that a cache hit. And on the other hand, we have cache miss, which happens when the requested data is not in the cache, necessitating a fetch from the original source. And cache ratio is the percentage of requests that are served from the cache compared to all requests. And a higher ratio indicates a more effective cache. You can check if the cache was hit or missed from the X cache header. For example, in this case it says miss, so the cache was missed. And in case the cache is found, we will have hit here. We also have server caching, which involves storing frequently accessed data on the server side, reducing the need to perform expensive operations like database queries. Server side caches are stored on a server or on a separate cache server, either in memory like Redis or on disk. Typically, the server checks the cache from the data before querying the database. If the data is in the cache, it is returned directly, otherwise the server queries the database. And if the data is not in the cache, the server retrieves it from the database, returns it to the user and then stores it in the cache for future requests. This is the case of write around cache, where data is written directly to permanent storage by passing the cache. It is used when write performance is less critical. We also have write-through cache where data is simultaneously written to cache and the permanent storage. It ensures data consistency but can be slower than write-around cache. And we also have write-back cache where data is first written to the cache and then to permanent storage at a later time. This improves write performance but you have a risk of losing that data in case of a crash of server. But what happens if the cache is full and we need to free up some space to use our cache again? For that we have eviction policies, which are rules that determine which items to remove from the cache when it's full. Common policies are to remove least recently used ones, or first in first out, where we remove the ones that were added first, or removing the least frequently used ones. Database caching is another crucial aspect and it refers to the practice of caching database query results to improve the performance of database driven applications. It is often done either within the database system itself or via an external caching layer like Redis or Memcache. When a query is made, we first check the cache to see if the result of that query has been stored. If it is, we return the cached data, avoiding the need to execute the query against the database. But if the data is not found in the cache, the query is executed against the database and the result is stored in the cache for future requests. This is beneficial for read-heavy applications, where some queries are executed frequently. And we use the same eviction policies as we have for server-side caching. Another type of caching is CDNs, which are a network of servers distributed geographically. They are generally used to serve static content, such as JavaScript, HTML, CSS, or image and video files. They cache the content from the original server and deliver it to users from the nearest CDN server. When a user requests a file like an image or a website, the request is redirected to the nearest CDN server. 
If the CDN server has the cached content, it delivers it to the user. If not, it fetches the content from the origin server, caches it and then forwards it to the user. This is the pool based type of CDN where the CDN automatically pulls the content from the origin server when it's first requested by a user. It's ideal for websites with a lot of static content that is updated regularly. It requires less active management because the CDN automatically keeps the content up to date. Another type is push based CDNs. This is where you upload the content to the origin server and then it distributes these files to the CDNs. This is useful when you have large files that are infrequently updated but need to be quickly distributed when updated. It requires more active management of what content is stored on the CDNs. We again use the cache control header to tell the browser for how long it should cache the content from CDN. CDNs are usually used for delivering static assets like images, CSS files, JavaScript bundles or video content. And it can be useful if you need to ensure high availability and performance for users. It can also reduce the load on the origin server. But there are some instances where we still need to hit our origin server, for example when serving dynamic content that changes frequently, or handling tasks that require real-time processing, and in cases where the application requires complex server-side logic that cannot be done in the CDNs. Some of the benefits that we get from CDNs are reduced latency. By serving content from locations closer to the user, CDNs significantly reduce latency. It also adds high availability and scalability. CDNs can handle high traffic loads and are resilient against hardware failures. It also adds improved security because many CDNs offer security features like DDoS protection and traffic encryption. And the benefits of caching are also reduced latency because we have fast data retrieval since the data is fetched from the nearby cache rather than a remote server. It lowers the server load by reducing the number of requests to the primary data source, decreasing server load. And overall faster load times lead to a better user experience.